Nomadic dwellings are more or less prohibited in France, let's say with the urban planning code. I think it's a shame because people can no longer afford housing in a nomadic dwelling. A yurt costs about 1,500 euros if you make it yourself, between 3,000 and 10,000 euros if bought from someone who makes them, and I think that's not normal. Currently, it's for the municipalities to decide if they will accept or not the installation of yurts as a main residence. I realized that there could be administrative bottlenecks, so I met elected officials, the administration, and the regulatory offices. I'm not against controls, on the contrary. It's precisely in this way that things will evolve, because if we stay cut off and we don't understand each other, then we create conflict, and I think that that exhausts us mutually on both sides. While if we try to work together, we work with intelligence. They are human beings too, like me. So that's what interests me, to meet and see what solutions we can find together. You're on time. Well, yes, I'm on time. I came to see you because I know you're going to leave Town Hall and so I'd love to show you around my cabin. Gladly, I've heard about it and saw it only from the outside. We've spoken many times as we've had some problems and difficulties, sometimes administrative. What I really appreciated about him is that he has always listened and wanted to integrate perfectly the village and I think he is integrated as he is popular. I mean, it's very difficult when you have projects that are a little outside the norm. We've always tried to avoid displeasing the local population, the city council. There has always been an ongoing dialogue, and I'm very happy with the result. Like Akim, Michel wants to raise awareness in the greatest number of people on the possibility of living differently more respectfully of the environment, and by consuming less. For this, he regularly welcomes families. OK, follow me. And we're going to see the cabin immediately. OK, so here there's a bed for you and a bed for the children. The fold up there. There you are. Good. Do you smoke, in fact? No. Good. Great. If you don't smoke, that's even better. No, almost never. I took three days to think about it when I got into the smart box or cool gift boxes and I thought, touching all these people, I tell myself it's possible. So I wouldn't say I'm using the system because at least I can reach many more people. So that's important to meet other people because otherwise they wouldn't come here, maybe. When I do the tours, what is important for me is to touch people's consciences because I always have open consciences in front of me. So I show them that it's possible to live differently because I've lived it for myself. I was in the system and I'm still in it in some way because I am. I have an individual business. I have a commerce number in order to receive school classes to be validated by the national education. But I try to make the connection between people who live in cities and those who live like us here in a different way and show that it is possible. We can change lives. What do you prefer, your home or the cabin and all that? I prefer the cabin. Would you like to live in the cabin? Yes. Why? Because it's really pretty and looks like Tinkerbell's home. I like it here because it's a real holiday and it's not like spending the day in front of the TV and all that. It's true that seeing different things will allow them to open up their minds. It's not like Disneyland or McDonald's. They do other things. They like the mountains and the countryside. They don't need anything to play. We want to go for a walk, but all they want to do is stay in the cabin. Finding yourself in nature with no stores, no network, you know, it feels good. 
when you're from a city. We're from Lyon. So it's a choice. When you go on vacation, you choose such places because it will change your daily life, your routine, so it feels good. It also sort of puts you back in your place. We're also human beings in nature. I like this kind of thing. Yes, there's another yurt with a child, and then tomorrow I have the tree house that will be taken as well. Come in. So there you have a good feather comforter. I'll let you turn it on, then you can settle in yourselves. And then after that, you turn off the small lamps. Bonjour. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Have a seat. Did you sleep well in the cabin? Very, very well. What can I get you? Coffee, tea, hot chocolate? I'll have some tea. If you want, you can have some. You want a hot chocolate? You will drink it, right? It's a place of transmission and sharing, of friendliness also, because we have an ecological campground. For us, that means it's not discos and noise, it's the sound of nature, the stream, people who bring their own instruments, guitars, things that are in harmony with this place. We're a couple of acupuncturists who spent last weekend in a yurt, and since last week, the hummingbird has made its way. We're buying our own house to renovate. Thank you for this wonderful meeting and the awakening of our consciousness. If we can really help people, it makes us happy too. To best transmit his experience, Michel organizes guided tours for every person who sleeps in his campground. So here is the phytopurification. So it's all the grey water coming from the house, kitchen, washing machine, bathroom and shower. So here are the dry toilets. What's written on the board there? Read me, what's written there? What's written? Little house on the Pee Pee Prairie. Why waterless toilets? Because here we have two streams, one spring, one river, but we save water nonetheless, because firstly, it's 50 litres per day per person, four people, 200 litres of water a day. And 365 days in a year multiplied by 200 people, that's 73,000 gallons of water, 40% of the water that you pay at home goes down the toilet. The water arrives here in this small retention, and so it's all the dirty waters from the home, kitchen, washing machine, bathroom and shower, like I said. And then there is a pump which brings the water. And the water goes to the right, then to the left. It energizes the water. You can see the movement it makes. So in there, there are small fish too, mosquito fish, which eat the mosquito larvae, as you'll see. I demonstrate each time. It's sewer water, and I can do it. You see, I'm drinking sewage water. For me, these visits are very important because I communicate with people. I share my experience. There are discussions and sometimes I don't even give the tour because conversations happen. That's it. You're not 100% ecological and against progress and against those who don't live like you do. Exactly. But I also try to make the connection because what you do in the city is you press buttons, turn the tap, pay your bills, yeah. but you don't know any longer where your energy comes from. That's what we were saying yesterday when we went to eat. We had a power outage one day. We have electric shutters and so we stayed in the dark all day. First, I'll explain my testimony. I was a draftsman, so I drew villas for 13 years. I stopped 17 years ago, and I drew 650 building permits. Now I'm redeeming my karma. I draw everything. I used my old profession in order to draw the cabin. Sometimes I receive people who work in the nuclear business, in pharmaceuticals, in the police, so I enjoy when I have them, and it always works well because I put myself at their level, and we talk about everything. 
In fact, last year I had someone who worked at the Tricastin nuclear plant, which is a member of Greenpeace. I think that's great. And I say, thank goodness you're here, because you are the safeguards. The day there's something to denounce, you'll be there. And as long as there's the human element where you are, well, that's important. That's to say that if you love what you do, stay with it. But if you no longer like it, change your life before you get sick, get a disease. When every morning I went to work and passed the same people all alone in their car, for me, I felt unwell with myself, with my life. I had a nice apartment with a beautiful view of the Vercors, but I didn't feel good because I wasn't autonomous. I told myself, the day there's a problem, I'll be stuck. Pretend you're drawing a circle. You press a bit without going too fast. It's not about speed. You'll feel the sound come up. He's one of those people who gives a little speech which he believes profoundly, but maybe these little bits that he gives to each will perhaps help society evolve a little too. I think it's an act of resistance we're doing here. For me, I feel like a resistant in the Vercors. All political parties should advocate ecology. It should be that you, you wouldn't even need to have a party, a Green Party, an ecologist party. It doesn't make sense. This is our planet, it's our children, it's our future.